Good morning, everybody. So good to see you all here today. Uh, if you're joining us virtually, welcome to you as well. We have we have a lot of things that we're going to be doing today. Uh, I really don't have a remarkable story about the Harbor Walk this morning. I know, I know that's disappointing for some of you, but uh, <laughs> but I, I never knew how many people in Punta Gorda owned parkas, or how they defined parkas. We can wear a fleece, and down here it's called a parka. So I wore my parka this morning when I went out walking. And I felt, I, with my shorts on, I felt rather conspicuous doing that. But you know, you got to do what you got to do. So it was a nice, quiet morning. And, and uh, no, unfortunately, no teenagers at the gazebo this week. So I guess nobody got married yesterday. So, uh, But there is, a, there is a craft fair down there. So there's all kinds of people milling around. So. As I said, we've got a lot of stuff to do, so I think I, I'm not going to highlight any of the announcements that we have, uh, although you'll figure out a couple of them. It remind you uh, that there's a meeting after worship is over to consider the financial resolution and propose changes to that. So if you can, please uh, meeting and, and offer your opinions and your suggestions. Um, but before we enter into that space, I wanted to ask, only because I know at least one, one thing, I, he's snickering at me. Why is he snickering at me? <laughs> I was just thinking this morning, you got, you got so many guys back there. I thought you'd have to be sitting on somebody's lap this morning just to be in the right place. But <laughs> yeah, we could have knocked the walls back a bit, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it great to see so many fo more folks in choir? Yes, welcome back. Uh, so I wanted to ask if we have any first-time visitors here this morning that would like to introduce themselves and tell us where they're from. <laughs> Now, Bob didn't know he was going to get in trouble when he came here this morning, but if you want to, Bob, you're welcome. You get, you get a door prize for this, too, by the way. Got to hold it close. Hold it right up close to your mouth. Nope. Turn on blue. Okay. Ready, set, go. Okay, Bob Sweetser from Vermont, Johnson, and I'm very pleased to be here. <laughs> Bob drove all the way down from Ruskin. He allowed me to be his pastor and friend for 10 years in Vermont, and uh, so we've, we've stayed close. And, and uh, it's been a while since you've been able to come down, but uh, I'm glad you're down here. And, and he only had to call me twice for directions. <laughs> <laughs> but I told him his problem. He said. <laughs> How many Sandys do we, have, do we have in the congregation today? <laughs> At least two or three. We gotta get one more. All right, one more, and I'm delaying my approach to you because we're filling a bag. Just be aware of what you get in that bag. You have to, to covet and guard closely, especially from David. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tara Stanford. I'm from Toronto, Ontario, and we have a place in Maple Leaf. Yes, well, welcome, And I'm Tara. happy to be here. Yes, <laughs> welcome, Tara. <laughs> We're putting our, our greeters to work today. <laughs> oh, Bill, let it... <laughs> I didn't warn you about Bill, I should have. <laughs> Anyone else visiting us today? Well, welcome, I'm glad you're here. I'm gonna leave this up here because it's gonna be needed in a minute. So I'm gonna ask uh, Vicki McDonald to come up uh, to kick, take care of our next announcement before we do some fun stuff. Good morning. This is the call to the annual meeting. The members of the Congregational United Church of Christ in Punta Gorda, Florida, are duly summoned and called to the annual meeting of the church, which will be held on Sunday, January 22nd, 2023, following morning worship service, approximately 11 o'clock. Article one, the annual meeting. Duly submitted, Vicki McDonald, church clerk. I bet you didn't know when you came here this morning you were going to be issued a summons. <laughs> Probably some of you may have experienced that before, but uh, it's a very special thing we get to do. Once a year, only once a year, we have an annual meeting, so that's, uh, that's a good thing. A moment ago, we we're going to get to do some fun stuff, so I'd like to talk, call Bill Tucker up front and center. <laughs> Oh, 
or either, either way. Okay. Thank you, Mike. It's a, it's a beautiful view out in the parking lot. As you know, I try to come in a little bit later than most people so that I can count cars and stuff. I don't think there may be one handicap and possibly now no other parking spaces on the pavement available. And this is the first time in a long, long time we've had that situation. And it's a marvelous, uplifting thing to see out there. And the weather's kind of nice, too. We like that a lot. I'm, uh, I'm the outgoing chair, oh, forgot about that, <laughs> outgoing chair of the, end <laughs> out there, of the endowment fund. And uh, it's my great pleasure to, uh, to make a couple of presentations today. And I'm going to start off with Kelly Gaylord. Kelly, if you would come up. Kelly is with the Mural Society, and she's going to spend a, a, a minute or two, or up to three minutes. I don't know what we're looking for. You take, you take what we want. Uh, we, have, we have had the great, we've had the great, thank you, Kelly. That's good. Keep it up close so I have to do <laughs> Kelly's a dear, dear friend of ours. <laughs> she puts up with this stuff. Um, we, we've had the great pleasure to be able to support the Mural Society, Punta Gorda Mural Society, over the years. And we had another great opportunity this year uh, to, to do that. They have a wonderful uh, restoration of a mural that you're going to speak about for just a little bit as you tell us about the Mural Society in general. And, uh, and we've also given you the check because I know that you needed to keep moving along on that project. Are you timing me? In <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Good morning. If you'd like to come up here, you could do That's fine. This is fine. Good morning. Um, so the Mural Society was started 28 years ago. It's been around a long time. Initially, we were started to help with the revitalization of the downtown, and then we grew beyond that. And today, we have 30-plus murals out and about all around town, and they each depict a slice of our history and present our history to visitors, tourists, and the community. Um, we are an all-volunteer board of directors of about 10 to 12 people, and we are responsible for creating and maintaining the murals, as well as doing all our fundraising. Our current project, as Bill alluded to, is a refresh, a re restoration, if you will, of an older mural. It was painted 16 years ago. It's our local black history mural. It is on the Baker Center School over off of Charlotte Avenue. And it, this one's very special to us. Um, it was painted, as I mentioned, 16 years ago, and its design was less than desirable. It kind of is like a figure and name type of design, just a bunch of people with names. It doesn't really tell you what's going on, and it doesn't really encourage you to come and learn more. So we decided three years ago that this was going to be our project. It was very important to upgrade that mural, uh, give it a brush, fresh new design that would draw the viewer in, that would help tell the story much better, as well as improve the artistic quality of the mural. Um, and bring it up to our current standards. And this really um, is important because it signifies the importance of a mural. If it's good quality and it tells a story, it really shows people that that history is important. Um, our local black history is something that is not taught in our local schools in the, when they talk about local history uh, curriculum, which is unfortunate. So it's really up to us to tell that story. This particular mural is on a great location. It's on the Baker Center School, but it's also within walking distance of three other schools. So we really see this as a future educational tool for our teachers, and we hope that they'll take advantage of that. We know one history teacher is already planning her field trips to come and see the new mural. So uh, we started the project about three years ago. We started fundraising last year, and the community, once again, has been extremely generous. We're very blessed with the generosity of the community. And with your contribution, we were able to reach our goal, and our artists started painting the, the, mural, the mural on panels, if you will, uh, last fall, and when we reached a certain level of our fundraising, and now he is in the process of completing those panels. The installation will occur the first week of February, so if you're around, you can stop by. He will be here an entire week installing the mural and finishing it. And our dedication is February 25th, Saturday at 10 a.m. We hope you can all join us. It's gonna be a special dedication because we have members of the black community that are gonna be involved in the, in the actual dedication. Um, and these people have personal 
ties to the history that's in the mural. So it'll be very special to hear their stories. So we hope you can all join us. And again, it's through the generosity of organizations like you that we're able to preserve our history and present it to, to all. So thank you. Thank you, Kelly. And, and uh, I guess this is my final giveaway for the year. Oh, oh good. <laughs> I like that good. This is, this is the check. I'll just do this and I'm going to turn it over. Uh, everyone knows Emily Klossner, of course, and, and most of you are aware that every year uh, we try to scrape together a little something to, uh, to give uh, to the giving tree uh, that Emily at least is our face from the school system. And, and this is really a personal, almost a personal project of yours. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the okay. bad girl. That's what it is. Okay, I'm done. Emily Claus. Hi, good morning. Um, I have with me May, who is our school social worker. I promised her she wouldn't have to off the cuff speak today, um, which she was thankful. <laughs> so uh, we just want to say thank you to the congregation for everybody who donated this year, especially with Hurricane Ian. Um, Services are provided for anybody who is not in their own home. So we know this year especially there was a lot of students who are sleeping at a relative's house or had to find temporary ho housing. So all of those students this year are considered homeless. So the need is even greater um, this year than in years past, so we do appreciate it. Uh, May will be happy, I'm sure, to talk to you afterwards individually and kind of tell you some of the stories of the kids getting the cards she was able to hand out, what you donated before Christmas, um, in our last couple days before break, and then now we'll be able to provide even more for the rest of the year and into as long as they last. So thank you very much. Yeah, please. Yeah, so my name is May Promising. I um, apologize for my voice. Um, so I am the school social worker, and I am new in the school. Um, I am new in my job, but this is going to be a tremendous blessing for our students, and you don't know how much and how many students we are, we have that are in need. And, you know, just from little things, um, I wasn't aware in the beginning that all of those gift cards that I was giving away were from your church. And these students, you would have to see their smiling faces when I give it to them. They are from requests. I mean, not, not even requests. When you realize, like, students that wanting to go to school and they're driving and they don't have gas money instead of, you know, wanting to buy gas money, they would rather, you know, buy that for food. So that's something that I would say, okay, here's... Um, a gift card to Sam's Club to get your gas. You know, those are just examples, but this is going to be a huge blessing, and this is going to support us throughout the years, and it's not just, I mean, throughout the year, this year and, and next um, as well, for sure. But um, we do have a lot of students that are in need, and especially like what um, Ms. Klossner said, that we have more in need because of the hurricane. We have families that got displaced. We got families that are living in substandard housing that, they would rather spend their money on, you know, to protect their home or to, to provide or get their food instead of their, you know, school supplies. And these money that um, you have blessed, um, you have given us is going to be a huge blessing because we could provide them that um, instead of, um, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you both. Thank you, congregation. Thank you. So that was fun. Let us continue our praise and worship of God. Sorry, folks. <laughs> psalm 29, a psalm of David. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to 
Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry, glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Thank you, Dick. So I had a moment of flashback during the reading of that psalm, reminded of a different storm that's described differently than how God's storm is and the strength of God's voice, and especially the last line, and the hurricane we experienced, I don't know of anybody who experienced peace. But with God's voice thundering over creation, peace comes because God is the one who creates peace. So for a moment, until you hear the doorbell ring, you have pleased the opportunity to wander about the sanctuary and greet each other with the peace of Christ and remember where you are when the bell rings. Please be seated. Join me in the call to worship. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The Lord 
May the Lord give strength to his people. Please join me in the unison prayer. Mighty God, as your spirit moving over the waters brought life from chaos in creation, the coming of Jesus Christ to this world has brought life to all who believe. Receive the praise and love of us who speak to the, his disciples, following him into the waters of new life. Give us now a fresh awareness of your presence here among us and in every place where Jesus walks today. For we pray in his name, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We hear the story of Jesus again giving himself more deeply into our lives through baptism and the opening of heaven's blessing upon him as he offered his life to God in prayer. Together, we who have heard the call to follow him in baptism are also offering ourselves to the world and opening ourselves to God's blessing every time we give of ourselves more deeply to others. Through our tithes and offerings as we approach the table of Christ's self-giving, we renew our baptismal vows and affirm God's reign in our own lives as standards of God's gifts. Come, let us bring our lives before God in the gifts we bring this day. Your offerings will now be received. Please rise. Let us together dedicate our offerings. Thank you, God of love, for the promise of this season. We are grateful for the generosity aroused in us by Christ's coming into the world. 
May these gifts represent a new spirit of joyous sharing among us for the sake of all your children everywhere. Amen. Please be seated. The prophetic lesson is from Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 9. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not fail or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to graven images. Behold, the, lower thing, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them.
Amen. I noticed it took two, two uh, signs to get them to sit down after that one. <laughs> Our gospel lesson today is from the third chapter of St. Matthew, the 13th through 17th verses. Let us be attentive to the reading of the word. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw God's Spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heavens said, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. May God bless us with deeper understanding. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. be seated. Time goes by pretty rapidly these days, it seems like anyways to me, that uh, it seems hard to believe that this is the eighth anniversary of my first Sunday in the pulpit of this church as your pastor. Time does fly when you're having fun. Happens to be on the 8th of January, too. That's pretty cool. So in case you didn't notice, today is the Baptism of Christ Sunday. And I, oh, I heard somebody groan. I'm not sure why. but Whenever these special days arise in the church calendar, sometimes it's okay to ask why. We have been through a rapid pace. Just 14 days ago, we gathered to celebrate the birth of Christ on Christmas Eve, 14 days ago. Two days ago was Epiphany when the wise guys showed up with their gifts to worship Christ, to worship Jesus. And today we're already baptizing him at 30 years of age. So sometimes time does go by pretty quickly, even for people in Jesus' day. But the baptism of Christ is a controversial piece of scripture. Now the important thing to remember is that all three of the synoptic gospels include the story of the baptism of Christ and John in his gospel alludes to the baptism of Jesus. So it's a sign to me, if not all of us, that probably it's a pretty important story. It's probably a pretty important part of the early church's liturgy and probably a pretty important part of their identity, that Jesus is baptized. Now the controversy comes around when we ask the question, why was Jesus baptized? Because earlier in the Gospel of Matthew, John the Baptist, the baptizer, appears in the wilderness calling people to repent and to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins, which creates the problem for today. Because most everybody will say that Jesus was without sin. Why would he come to seek baptism from John if it was for repentance and the forgiveness of sins. So that creates controversy. Now I think wonderfully we don't have a full description of the baptism of Jesus because that was left up to us to imagine what that was like. And you can imagine too that it creates controversy between traditions. You can have all the way from a sprinkling, almost like a spritzer spritzer bottle sprinkled on somebody to full immersion underwater. You can have infants baptized and only adults baptized. No matter what we choose to do, what the churches have chosen to do over their course of time, it's been because of 
their own decision, not because of what they find in this scripture from Matthew. Sometimes I look at these passages and say, if there had been just a little more explanation, maybe we would know the one way instead of claiming for ourselves that we already know it when it isn't described for us. That's one thing the church has done over the centuries is separated itself from one another in these ways. Now the United Church of Christ, what I am ordained into has two sacramental offerings. One is baptism and one is the Eucharist or communion. I kind of like only having two because I don't have to learn a lot more about more. But having two became important to me when I was in seminary because I suddenly realized that if I don't take seriously baptism and the Eucharist, how is anyone else going to take it seriously? Now that's not to say you can't have a little fun as a pastor when it comes to baptism because I will ask what the traditions are that the person was raised in. In the course of the 27 years that I've been a pastor, I have never fully immersed anyone because that wasn't their experience. Had they asked for it, I would have tried. It would have been interesting for the person being baptized, having a, a, a rookie trying to do it. When, when do I bring them up? At what point do I take them out of the water again? Am I waiting too long? Am I not waiting enough? Are they thrashing about a bit and telling me what the hint is? But you can have fun. That's one thing I realized. Uh, I'm still amazed to this day and have been since the day of my ordination that I'm allowed to do this that I'm allowed to baptize adults or children, that I'm allowed to serve communion as a pastor in the church, because it is so filled with meaning and emotion and tradition. I have to be really careful what I'm treading on when I do it. When I served in New England, I, every summer in the middle week, now you know there's 13 weeks of summer when you're in New England, and the middle week, the seventh week, is always when we had our our uh, lakeside barbecue or potluck meal, and I would throw in an affirmation of baptism for people. Now, you could watch people getting ready for that because they would look at the temperature every day and say, okay, it's only been in the mid-50s from June until the beginning of July, or it's been in the 90s from April till July. They were gauging just what that water was gonna feel like if they chose to have their baptism affirmed. Now I would cheat, I gotta let you know, I would cheat, and I would do something subversive. I would go down to the lake and I'd take a bowl full of water and I'd bring it back up to where we were celebrating our worship service, because we always had worship before the meal. And as part of the service, I would consecrate that water, make it for holy purpose and not just a dip out of the lake, or not just a dip in the lake. And then here's where I got sneaky, because when it came time to affirm people's baptism that wanted to go into the water, pour it into the lake. Nobody around that lake that had a summer camp knew that they were swimming in sacred water from that point on. We consecrated the lake every single year for 19 years. Now the tricky part was, this is where people were doing the calculations, is that I would ask anybody who wants to come down and have their baptism affirmed, follow me. And I'd have my suit on with my collar and my coat and I would wade out into waist-deep water, inviting everybody to come, and this is where they really either regretted or really liked what they were about to do. They didn't see that I had behind my back a bowl that would hold two gallons of water. So I would come out of the water, and it was the same seven people every year that followed me out into that water. Everybody else, and Bob was one of them, would sit on the shore, <laughs> and watch these crazy people wade into water that was either freezing or the air was freezing and the water felt good. See, that's what I realized after a course of time, that it was a lot like birth, that when they went into that water and the water was colder than the air, it was like the shock of being born, coming out of this warm, wet place and finally coming into these bright lights and hearing loud voices. And in a lot of cases, I know it was true when I was born, there was a smack on the butt to get you going. Start your life with pain. Isn't that the way it's supposed to go? And the pain of that cold water, it was either like the shock of being born or when the water was just right and the air was just right, when that water was poured over them, it was like being back in the womb, that safe, comfortable, warm place. 
And every single person, including myself, and that was the part of, the, part of what enticed a couple people into the water, is that they got to pour water over me when I was done pouring water over them. We were all drenched to the skin. We were all laughing and joking and crying because in an instant, all of that meaning came tumbling down onto our shoulders. It would not have had meaning if it wasn't for today, if it wasn't for how we have Jesus' baptism, his own baptism described to us, even in its incomplete description. It means something, it means a lot. I've baptized more adults than I have children and I didn't think that would be true when I entered ministry. Now, one of the things that I learned in seminary, and it shocked me and it angered me in the same moment, one of the teachers that were teaching us the history of the church said that when in the first century, when Christianity began to really get rolling and baptism was a part of their life, someone had to go through three years of instructions before they were allowed to be baptized into the Christian church. For those three years, you studied scripture, you listened to wise people talk to you, and you were not allowed to partake of communion for three years until you were baptized. That's a commitment, folks. That's where a lot of the understanding, I think we come from, what, why it's a different meaning for adults than it is for children to be baptized. My two boys were baptized. Kelly and I and our godparents took vows that day to live up to that when infants are baptized, it's the parents and those around them, those in their own faith community that are supposed to teach them what it means, who Jesus is, what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, and how important that is. And later on in life, they'll be asked to make a choice if they want to affirm that baptism, become members of a community of faith. Remember what I just said for next week. Anyway, so there was, there, was a, there was gatekeeping for the Christian community, and that's what angered me. I said, why would anyone have to go through that in order to be baptized? Because it was one of the sacraments of the church, and they took it seriously, just like we do today. I remember one time in particular, and I'm not sure, I, I think I held this outside of a worship service, but half the church was there anyways, when I baptized a child, Ronan, who uh, his mother was of the Unitarian, his father was Lutheran. So their compromise was to have a christening for their son, who at this point was already four years old. And so I said, we're going to have a blast when we do this. So when they came into the sanctuary, I had a big blue tarp laid out on the floor. If that wasn't a clue to them, for them to run away, they weren't gonna get it. But I had a big blue tarp and I had a big bowl of water sit on top of the, the baptismal font. And I told everybody before they came forward, I said, I'm here to baptize Ronan, but we're all gonna get baptized today. Not a one of you is gonna leave here dry. Because we get to participate in the baptism of others in our own way, to remember our own baptisms, to affirm what we know about Jesus and why it's important to us to be baptized. Ronan had no clue as to what was gonna go on. He got baptized, they took both hands and poured water over his head, and he laughed. I didn't have to guess if he knew what it meant. But then each one of the people who came to accompany that baptism, or that, that, that christening, that dedication, each one of them came forward and stood in front of me and were glad to have water poured over their heads. Even the 85-year-old grandparents they had no clue what they were getting into when they came. Baptism should be a celebration and it should be memorable. Some of us were baptized as babies, some of us were baptized as adults. We all still probably have listened to those stories of our own baptism or remember them for ourselves. And that day as to what it meant when that water was poured or sprinkled or we were dunked, that when we came out, we came out to new life so why was Jesus baptized? We'll come back to that topic. Jesus explains it because John, in the Gospel of Matthew, questions him. He was going to stop, prevent Jesus from being baptized because John already knew that Jesus didn't need it. But it turned out that Jesus wanted it. When John confronted him, Jesus said, but it is, let it be so now, for it is proper for us 
in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus explained it in a sentence that this is God, what God wants us to do. See, baptism is about submission to God's will. It's about joining a family of God's family. It's about becoming a child of God, offspring of the Holy One. In that moment, we don't do anything. God does all the work. I may get to sprinkle water over somebody's head, or you may get to have it sprinkled over yours, but it's God who's doing all the work. We may not see a dove light on our shoulder. We may not hear a voice from heaven, but it surely is there. Your baptism, I want you to know, when you experience your baptism, either as an adult or a baby, there was a voice whispering in your parents' ear, your godparents' ear, or yours. This is my child, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Jesus made a choice. John was forced to make a choice, but Jesus chose to be baptized like you and I, and we like him, to be blessed to become a child of God on that day, to have the heavens open before us and the Spirit of God descending upon us and alighting on us and a voice calling us beloved. We were claimed that day. That's why I said it's a lot like birth. We were claimed that day by God to be God's child. We have earthly parents. We have a heavenly parent. The one in heaven claims us for God's own. Think about that for a second. If you ever think that you're not good enough, or that you've lived a life that was so full of stuff that nobody else would want to see, that you're not worthy to be called a child of God, forget it. Because God has claimed you the day you claimed God. Is baptism important? Yeah. Now, you, you're safe today because I didn't bring a big bowl of water. In the past, what I have done is have people run around the sanctuary with a, 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 probably a palm leaf down here. I use cedar in Vermont. Sprinkling the entire congregation. I remember there was one woman where I did that in one of the churches, and she dove under the pew <laughs> when that water came to her. And I, I asked her afterwards, I said, why did, you, why did you run away? She says, I didn't want to ruin my hairdo. <laughs> I didn't say to her what I thought. <laughs> that it already was. But anyways, so you're lucky today. Maybe you can symbolically accept that today you have water sprinkled on you because God is here to do it with you and for you. And today you hear that voice again. You are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Amen.
In some ways, as a way of thanksgiving, we get to offer our prayers to God in recognition that God hears and God answers, even if we may not know how that answer has taken place or what God's will is until that moment. But we ask if there are prayers that haven't been included, and I'll read them to us, that we have some we've been praying for for a very long time, for Marjorie and Dick and those around the world who are treated to injustice, severe weather events, people of, the Ukra of Ukraine, for Stacy, for the continuing victims of Ian, Hurricane Ian, for Diane and her treatments and recovery, and for Car Kathy Ann for her diagnosis and prognosis. For Carolyn, who continues to improve but is still homebound in many ways. For Ron, who has a continuing frustration with how to deal with surgeries that need to happen and being free of infections to allow those to happen. Now, Jerry, I think you're doing pretty well, so we can probably put you in our, in our joy section. Um, and, and Cindy, who continues to, uh, to struggle a bit. Jim, to good, who continues to improve. I suspect, I don't know this to be the truth, so just take it for what it's worth, that, that Jim probably has a hard time um, following orders on how to recover. Uh, Naoma uh, is uh, experiencing some vision issues, and so she's being treated. For Jeff and Julia and Grace, who are now recovering from COVID, Jeff is in the pulpit today. I know he's not watching, but he's in the pulpit today for the first time in weeks. He missed Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, uh, New Year's Day in the pulpit. And for those who are retired clergy in the middle, when you, in the midst, when you don't get to preach a sermon and it builds up inside, it's not a pretty sight. Because you tend to preach a 30 minute sermon when you come back the first time. So uh, for Jeff and Julia and Grace, who are all doing well. And I don't have any word that we have any um, additions. If you're, if you're watching online and you want to drop into the comment line, uh, someone you want prayers for, we'll try to get mentioned this week, and if not this week, and next week. You still can contribute, even if we don't get to today, and we will make sure to offer your prayers to, the, to God when we have the opportunity. So what we get to do in hearing of those names and those situations is to take them on as our own for the time of prayer. We get to offer them as part of our community, leave them in God's hands to answer. So let us remember all those we have mentioned and bring them with us into our time of prayer. Let us pray. O oh, Creator God, when everything first began, water became a symbol of refreshing, of washing away, of renewing. Through the waters of creation, you brought forth abundant life. We have gathered this day to remember Jesus' baptism, how your spirit proclaimed he was your beloved son in whom you were very well pleased. Our spirits resound with that same proclamation. In his baptism, Jesus' ministry was initiated. He dedicated his life to you completely and without reservation, regardless of the future. Help us to dedicate our lives to you in that same way, to offer you our best, to be of service to you by serving in your world. As we have lifted before you the names of people near and dear to us who need your healing touch, and your tender mercies, we also have lifted ourselves up as people in need of your grace. In our world where there is war, oppression, hunger, conflict, and ill, we have not been good stewards of this world. We have not cared for one another. In this moment, remind us how to be those people, your people, called as your children to recognize the other children you have placed in our midst. We shared those names out loud, but sometimes when we share, we forget to, to mention others. So from our place of silence, Lord, hear our unspoken prayers. Heal us in this world, O oh Lord. Renew us with your life-giving waters and reaffirm our baptisms as your children. Let us go forth to be people of peace and mercy. For we ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please rise.
Go forth joyfully, God is with you. Bring peace and hope to all you meet, and may God's eternal love shine through you always. Amen.